Hello, Engineering 110. Last time we made a box. You made an STL file that created 12 triangles, two triangles for each face. Six faces made 12 triangles to make a box. But to do much with this box though, uh, we'd like to be able to draw lots of boxes and draw them in different positions. The box that we drew is at coordinate 0, 0, 0 for the bottom, down, back, or the left, down, back coordinate. So what if I'd like to write a function that draws the box? And I want this function to be able to draw the box anywhere. So maybe I want to draw the box up here, this blue box. Okay, so here I'm going to be drawing the box some distance that I don't want to have to commit to. I want to be able to draw it anywhere. So I want to draw it some distance x over. I want to draw it some distance y up. And also some distance z in and out. A little hard for me to do that on my on my drawing, but uh, let's see if I if I take this box and I shift it, what are the new coordinates going to look like? So let's see, the coordinates of this new box, this, this back coordinate there, is no longer going to be 0, 0, 0. This bottom back left coordinate is now going to be shifted over x, up y, and out z. Okay, how about this coordinate? Well, this coordinate previously was shifted over 1 compared to the 0, 0, 0. So this would be x plus 1. So wherever your starting coordinate is, add 1. It's still up y and out z. How about this coordinate? Well, this is now x, but the y coordinate would be up by 1. And its in and out coordinate would be z. Okay, so the coordinates are all going to change. I want them to all be able to be shifted by some amount x, y, and z. Okay, let's go to the code and see if we can do this. Okay, now I'm over at the code to do this. Let's uh, package up our code that makes a box. And uh, my code that I have on the board is only making part of a box. I had asked you on Tuesday's class to finish the box. I'm not going to be showing you code that makes the whole box. I need you to do that on your own. But let me go ahead and package up my partial box as a function. So the code that creates the box, everything with the double slash is involved with making the box. So I'm going to create a function here called make box. I'm going to copy this stuff because in order to make the box, I need some vertices. In order to make the box, I have to write my triangles, okay, like that. So the make box function is using the vertex class, which we created last time, and the right face t function, which we created before. Okay, uh, now I'd like this, and down here I can call my make, make box function. Now I'd now like to add to this a feature where the make box function can be can draw the box at any set of coordinates that I want. So I could create a set of coordinates as inputs to the make box function so that when I create these vertices, I don't create them at 0, 0, 0. I create them at x, y, z. 
x plus 1, y, z, x, y, this would be z plus 1, and then this would be x plus 1, y, and z plus 1, like that. Okay, so my x, y, and z are inputs to the make box function. So in my main program, I'd like to call the function. Uh, it, this function now requires how many inputs? Again, don't be shy. You can say it out loud to yourself. Looks like three inputs. So the make box function, when I use it, I have to give it three inputs. And these three inputs represent where the box is to be drawn. So let's say I want to draw it up five. So this 500 zero, zero is just telling me where the bottom corner of that box should be. So this is going to be drawing it up above the, uh, the plane. Now, of course, remember, my box is incomplete. Yours will have a little bit more stuff there. So let me see if I can make two boxes. Make box 50. And let's put this box at the origin. So I'm now going to be drawing two boxes. OK, so what I want you to do now is save it, compile it, and run it, and then view your STL file to see if you've successfully drawn two different boxes. And after that, move on.